How's it going? So here I am. Uh, I got the new whiteboard from my room. I will put a timestamp in the video down below or in the description that you can skip to the start of the problems. Uh, this is just a message for people who have been, you know, viewers of my channel for a while. Um, I'm going to be doing some new content now. Not uh, new, but there's a lot of things I've wanted to get to in film. But ever since I lost access to that old room, I didn't want to film them in subpar quality and then not have uh, a, you know, a long-term video that lasts a long time. People watch it a lot. I wanted it to be higher quality. And that room I was in just couldn't do it. So bought the whiteboard, got it moved to my house. Uh, thank you to those who helped support that purchase as well. You know who you are. Um, I haven't started the Patreon thing yet. I don't have the t-shirts ready yet. I'm working on those things because I'm doing a couple other projects, including a video teaching series. Um, when that series is ready to go live, I will inform you guys about it. You will know and be able to find out where you can find that content at. Um, in addition, I got partnered with YouTube. Thank you guys so much for uh, being a part of the journey, um, for, for watching and the suggestions about problem types to do. And some of you have given me advice on uh, various things in the comments that have helped guide my path along the way. If you go back to the old videos, they're, whoo, ah, the sound was bad, the lighting was bad, some of the camera quality was horrible. At one point, I used a, a webcam external from like 2012 uh, to film a couple videos because, you know, I just don't have the funds and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's been a long journey to get where we're at. Happy to be here. And this is where I will be filming uh, from the foreseeable future, unless, you know, we move out of this house and rent somewhere else. Uh, so um, what else to add? Uh, can't think of anything. Yeah, let's get started on the, the problem, shall we? Let's see how it goes. If you guys can leave comments about what you think of the lighting and is it okay, better than the last location, sounds okay, and all that kind of thing. Let's get started on the 2017 AMC 10B problem number one. Mary thought of a positive two digit number. She multiplied by three and added 11. Then she switched the digits of the result, obtain a number between 71 and 75 inclusive. What was Mary's number? Um, you could try to do like some complex algebra, but one thing you want to remember on a test like this, you're not showing your work to anyone. There's no teacher grading going, oh, you didn't show your work, minus one half. You know you've all had teachers like that. Don't, yeah, we know how that goes. Okay, this is the luxury of taking a competition test. You get to not show whatever work you want. You can do whatever you want, basically. You have the freedom, right? One of the reasons I loved creative problem solving and competition math in general. So here we go. Uh, why don't we just use the answers? We could just do that. There is a slightly faster modified path from that even. And that is if you're going to multiply a number by three, right? And then add 11, we can think about the units digit only, right? So for example, if I multiplied the five by three, it's going to end in 5. And then if I added 11, I really care only about the units digit. I would be adding only 1 to that. The units digit of that number would end in 6. Why does this matter? Because she switched the digits and got a number between 71 and 75. And we can do a quick check and go, is that a 7? Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> so that's not the answer. It's not going to be the one with 5. Try this one. 3 times 4 is 12. That's 2 is the units digit, right? Uh, we don't care about the tens digit, not relevant for us right now. Add one, that's not a seven. Three times three is nine plus one, no. Three times two is six plus one is seven. This is probably gonna work. Let's just check it out. Three times 12 is 36. Add 11, you get 47. Sure enough, when we flip that around, a number between 71 and 75, on to the next problem. All right, if you notice a slight different in the background, uh, it's a little more blue in problem one than this one. I did an adjustment to the white balance. Uh, I just looked a little bit too blue to me. I'm trying to get it right. Haven't quite perfected it yet. Uh, here we are on problem two for the 2017 AMC 10B. Just a reminder, if you guys are interested in private tutor, you can find my email 
on the description page or the about page of my channel. Feel free to reach out. There will be classes in the future as well. I will let you know about that when it comes up. Sophia ran five laps around the 400 meter track at her school. For each lap, she ran the first 100 meters at an average speed of four meters per second and the remaining 300 meters at an average speed of five meters per second. How much time did Sophia take running the five laps? Um, I think for me, we don't need to split it between like, you know, do the part of this lap, second part, part of this one, second part. Let's just do all the first 100 meters of each lap, right? Let's do all of those at once. If she's doing five laps and there's, they're all 400 meters, the first 100 of which are at one speed. Oh, by the way, what overarching concept are we looking at here? We're looking at rate times time equals distance. I hope that you are comfortable with that topic. It's an absolute staple on the test. If you don't know it, shame, shame upon you and your whole family. No, I'm just kidding. I just a joke. Uh, but yeah, no shame. Really learn, learn the formula though, right? Rate times time equals distance, right? We want to bring honor to our families, of course. Uh, so, uh, how does it work? Well, if she's running a hundred meters in five laps, that's 500 meters. So the distance she's going is 500 meters. The rate she's running it at is four meters per second. Uh, keep in mind that the time in the rate is what the time will be based on here. So since this is four meters per second, the time will be in seconds. Um, all you have to do is take the distance and divide by the rate to get the time. It's going to be 125 seconds. Okay, but then she ran 300 meters at an average speed of five meters per second. Um, I could do, I just see something in my mind. I'm just going to go about it this way. Uh, you could do all five laps and get 1500. Um, but I think what I want to do, uh, rather than put 1500 actually, uh, is just go with the 300, but realize again, I'm not showing my work to anyone, but me on the test. Uh, realize that uh, this is only one lap, right? So in this one lap, why did I do this? Because it comes out to exactly one minute and all of our answers have minutes in them. So rather than have to get the seconds for this one, add it up, find it, I guess it's not that long. It's not that big of a deal, whatever. Do it your way if you wanna do all seconds here in 1500, it's pretty fast. Uh, anyhow, so this is one minute to do that portion of each of these laps. He's gonna do five of these laps, or she is rather, um, and five minutes would be go by for that portion of each of the laps, right? If you want to see what that would look like, it would be 1500 total meters because 300 for five laps and then still at five and you would divide to get 300 seconds. You would add these two numbers to get 425, 420 obviously being a multiple of 60 It's seven minutes, five extra seconds. It's going to be C. But if I did it this way, which is what I thought of, and sometimes I get too cute on the test for my own good, trying to find that super brilliant shortcut or something, and you waste more time doing that. Maybe it's just better just to go the standard route, if you will, sometimes, not always. Um, but certainly after you're done with the problem, go back and revisit and look for places you could have cleaned up the time a little bit. So this is one minute and you had five laps at that speed, five minutes, 120 seconds is two more minutes, total of seven minutes and five seconds. Answer, choice, C. See you guys in the... All right, here we are on the 2017 AMC 10B problem number three. It was also the 12B problem two. Real numbers X, Y, and Z satisfy the inequalities. X is between zero and one, Y between negative one and zero, and Z between one and two. Which of the following numbers is necessarily positive? Meaning it has to be, not it could be, but there's no way it could not be positive. Okay, there's not really a you know, super fast way to do this. Just kind of go through them and analyze each one. Um, X squared, X could be something really tiny. You're trying to make the worst case scenario. So say X is 0 0.1 and you square it. Now it's one over 100 or 0 0.01 and Y is a really big negative number like negative 0.99. Then that's not gonna be positive. Um, if I do this, again, x could be 0 0.1, z could be 1.1, I would get 0.11. If y is a bigger negative than 0.11, absolute value-wise, that won't work. 
This seems promising because of the y squared. We think, okay, a negative squared is positive, but you can actually see this if you just factor out uh, a y, it'll be equivalent to this. Let me switch to one plus y. Yes, this will definitely be a positive right here, but that's a negative and you're multiplying. That's a negative, not the answer. The same thing is going to happen here. If you factor out a y, you will get one plus two y. Um, this could be a uh, stay negative actually. It could, but it doesn't have to. Um, so because I could find a way to make this um, positive, right? Let's say y is negative 0.1. Right, then this becomes 0 0.8, 1 plus negative 0.2. So I could have a positive times a negative here, again, doesn't work. That leaves this, and again, if this doesn't work, we go back and reevaluate our thinking. Okay, so y being uh, some number between negative 1 and 0, and z being more than 1 in the positive direction, even if it's 1.01 .01 and y is, you know, 0 0.9999, it's guaranteed to be positive. We're on to the next problem. All right, continuing on the 2017 AMC 10B problem four. It was also the 12B problem three. Suppose that X and Y are non-zero real numbers that could be important later, such that that expression is true. What is the value of this expression? Um, they're not the same expression. It's not just switched or anything. Just uh, what do you do? You just look at this and ask yourself, what's the most logical thing to do? Probably to multiply by the square root of 17.8. No, right? Just kidding. That's a joke, right? Obviously, what you want to do is, you know, if you have the situation a fraction equals something, maybe get rid of the fraction. Uh, again, you do not have to have in your mind an exact reason why you do that. It's just the only logical thing to try, right? Don't, don't look at this and so, well, I don't know if that's going to help me. Doesn't matter. A big part of the test is just uh, taking what they give you, manipulating it to look different, and then reevaluating where you're at. So here we go. We're going to multiply by x minus 3y. That will give 3x plus y equals negative 2x plus 6y. Don't forget that's a negative there. Um, go ahead and move the y over here to get 5y. The negative becomes positive added to that, and you're going to find out that x equals y. A significant conclusion, I call it. So based on that significant conclusion, I can replace either these with, let's just do it, yeah, this with y, for instance. So y plus 3y is 4y. 3y minus y is 2y, the ratio of which is 2. We're on to question 5. Okay, and here we are on the 2017 AMC 10B problem five, the last problem of this set. Camila had twice as many blueberry jelly beans as cherry jelly beans. So let's let cherry equal X and blueberry will equal two X, right? There we go. Again, make sense of what you read as you read it in general. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but when I'm thinking about it, I do. After eating 10 pieces of each kind, so she's going to lose 10 from here and lose 10 from here, she now has three times as many blueberry jelly beans as cherry. So if I take 2x minus 10 and x minus 10, I, I've made this into a ratio. Why? Because we can now make that ratio equal to 3 to 1 right? And that would look like this. Uh, how many blueberry jelly beans did she originally have? Be really careful here that you don't just solve for x and be done. We'll see why. So uh, cross multiply, of course. Uh, 2x minus 10 equals 3x minus 30. Um, we will, I guess, add 30 to get 20 and subtract 2x to get x. So x is 20. If that's what you did, you got x, and this is how we work. We're like, comes from school, has taught us this, right? Oh, I solved for x. I'm so, go team, go, right? And then you're like, you got it, but actually you got it wrong, and you were in such a hurry, you moved on because you solved for x, but the problem doesn't ask for x, right? It asks how many blueberry jelly beans did she get? Okay, so then all we're going to do is just double that number, the answer, 40. Watch out for those trap answers, guys. See you in the next video.